Hi, welcome to Ethereum Mechanics Foundation Series video number four. In this one we're going to look at the evolution of new electromagnetism. From the previous video we spent our time trying to come up with a improved model for electromagnetic induction that applies equally to point charges as well as it does to wire loops. I named this new model New Induction. The reason why I was living in Connecticut at the time and Connecticut's part of New England and Connecticut has towns like New London, New Hartford, uh, well, it's got New York, and when I was growing up I learned new math and all this is part of the new world, so hey, why not new induction? <laughs> um, and this is the model that we came up with in the previous videos. Now the, remember that the primary argument that classical induction was wrong is it does not apply to open loops or point charges. And I mean granted, if charges are the most basic building block of electromagnetic structures, then all electromagnetic effects need to be able to reduce to point charges. And second order point charges, you understand what second order means from the previous video. But now that we have a model for inductance, what about the others? Now, how many others could there be? Well, engineers do not seem to need anything more than second order differential equations. There might be higher order components, but either they are so small we haven't noticed them, or they're just not there. Or maybe they are there and we just never have run an experiment, or maybe we've mistaken them for something else. It's very possible. But right now, I'm just going to stick with second order until we can find that there's anything else, and then we'll go look for it. So we already have one for, uh, one for position and one for acceleration. What about velocity? Well, we have what's called the motional electric law, or F equals QV cross B. And if we combine that with the byatt savart model, you can derive the following. Okay, and then we can put that into the equation. This becomes new electromagnetism V1. And just to re reassert to you that Coulomb's model shows a spherical field, new induction shows a spherical field, and the first order form only shows a, a transverse field which is similar to the transverse model of magnetism from classical theory. All right, that's where I started. I didn't bother going further with this. I, I kind of saw this, but I just wanted to see where we would go. Oh, and this derivation, a lot of people have done this, so I'm not going to show this to you. It's, it's out there. It's even in my papers on my website. So let's just take, this is, remember, the initial objective was to find a link between induction and inertia, if you remember the intro video. So if we just take new induction, which is here, we say, gee, you know, it looks just like force equals minus ma. This is the way you would write the inertia in a second order differential equation. Because as you try to, as this, if you try to accelerate the ball, the reaction force against your finger is going to be negative to the direction of acceleration. That's the reason for the minus sign. Okay, so the proper rendition, well, at least that's the way engineers use it, is force equals minus ma. And so if we say, hey, well, here's new induction, and say, well, gee, you know, this m fits this. And so we say, well, the quote-unquote effective mass is this, and we use QM or KM to be the standard value for KM. And then if we plug in the classical electron radius for R, KM for KM, and we just use the, 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 the charge of an electron for QS and QT, guess what we get? We get the effective mass is this, which is, if I did my significant figures right, it's one more significant figure more than the actual published measured value of the mass of an electron. And so here we have the first electromagnetic model for inertia. So let's take the largest red pill we can find and let's assume, let's make an assumption, an extrapolation that matter is comprised of massless charged particles and see how deep the rabbit hole goes. No. In ethereal mechanics, massless particles are replaced with the concept of inertialist, because mass is a quantity of stuff. Over the years, physicists have, 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 have joined mass and inertia into the same thing. And, and just like they had to dis separate weight from mass earlier, we now have to separate inertia from mass, because now inertia is a property of matter. It has nothing, it, it, well, I'm going off on a tangent. We can, you, we'll see that argument when, you, if you, when, when and if you get to ethereal mechanics. And also inertialist particles are called pretons. 
my eight-year-old nephew at the time came up with that word. So how can a system of like charges, like charges, be stable? Well, first, if we sum all the equations of new electromagnetism together and sum them to zero, so all the forces cancel, and we assume that this particle and I'll show you the reason why. We're going to use for the distance between the particles, we're going to use two RP, twice the radius of the particle. We'll explain that this is RP and this is the distance between the two is two RP. We'll explain that in a minute. And also we said that KE is also equivalent to KM times C squared and then we can reduce it to this. Now one such mode of stability is both particles orbit about a central point with a tangential velocity. So the question is, what value of V satisfies the equation? Well, since the tangential velocity is never moving in direction of R, this term goes to zero, and we're left with these three. And then this can be reduced. Now, you have to remember here, this sign goes from negative to positive because these tangential velocities are in opposite directions. So there's a minus sign with this dot product, which cancels this minus sign, and that's why it becomes positive here. So that reduces here. And then we reduce, 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 and we find out that when the protons hit the speed of light, the system, all the forces cancel on this system. Now, since they're inertialess particles, there's no need for them to have centripetal inertia to fly off into space. They're completely inertialess. Also, stability is independent of the quantity of charge and the distance between. And rule of acquisition 17 tells us right here the ambiguity tell that a more fundamental model may exist. Model may exist. But let's put that aside and let's see what else we can discern from this model. Suppose we had a hypothetical electron. We already found we can get the mass of an electron, but it has twice that that inertia that we showed you before has twice the charge of an electron. So if we pick half charges and we change the distance to Re over four then we can get the mass of an electron with the correct charge. And in fact, there's a plural plurality of solutions which will give the same answer. Again, there's something more fundamental going on according to the 17th rule of acquisition. Again, let's see how far we can go. Let's next see how much energy there is in a system. Uh, let's just go back to what we had before where the unit charges to keep the math simple. Okay, so the kinetic energy in this system, because it's rotating, if you were able to stop this system cold, you know, and, and able to slow it down over the shortest distance possible, how much kinetic energy would you get out of this system? Well, the kinetic energy is going to be one half mv squared of what it is now. And since v is the speed of light squared mass, is the effective mass we computed before, then the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, which substituting uh, km q squared over 2rp into this equation gives this as the kinetic energy of the system. Purely electric. Your energy now is purely electric. Mass, inertia rather, is purely electric too. What's the potential energy? Well, potential energy is well known. If you were to take two charges and take hold one steady and take one in from infinity to the distance of 2rp. Okay, this is a well-known equation and you would end up getting this. The integral as you go from infinity to 2rp of, of the, using the electric field model Coulomb's law dot dl. I think there's a minus sign there. That's your potential energy. And that's just it reduced here. That's this or the same thing. And this is the amount of energy you get. So what's the total energy? Well, we have the kinetic and the potential. There's the kinetic, there's the potential. And remember that Ke is Kmc squared, and substitute that into that. We get this, and we sum it together, we get this. But then we remember that, well, effective mass in our case is going to be Km 2rp qsqt. So this, this part gets replaced with m, and we're left with E equals mc squared. So this, my friends, means that your energy, your inertia, and your energy are all interrelated. Everything is electricity. 
So the quantum mechanics people that have these models for matter that have mass and this intrinsic quantity is baloney. All your mass, everything in the universe, according to what we're seeing here, everything is electricity. Everything is electricity. And here you have very simple derivations that a school child can do. Time dilation. If we took this spinning system and we were able to translate it coming up out of the page, how would that affect it? Well, if you go through the same equations we went to before with the stability, and you can go to my website, I forget if it's in uh, ne.pdf or ng.pdf. Uh, if you go to distinti.com, docs, you can browse this, and it's in one of these guys here. And uh, you've got to be careful. My old papers were written 20 years ago about, and so there's a lot of I'm better than the rest of the world kind of crap in there, and that this stuff is right, it's irrefutable. I, I was trained the way scientists were, and so I, I had to, I've worn that off over the years and gotten to the reality that, you know, the best we can do is come up with models that mimic nature. Who's right or wrong, it doesn't really matter right now. So my tone in these papers might be a little off-putting. Uh, that's immaturity and poor training from college. So take that with a grain of salt. But the derivations for this are there. Okay. And so what happens is, it, it, for this system to remain stable as it's now translating in another direction, means that the tangential velocity can slow down. And the tangential velocity slows down by Einstein's time dilation relationship, which now we find out is not really time dilation, it's process dilation. So the first time we have a model for matter which shows that Einstein had it backwards, or could have it backwards. It's not time that slows down. It's the material processes of matter that slow. Time is unchanged, but that doesn't really tell us what time is. Okay, time is another abstract thing that we have to do something with because it, I don't think we actually have, well, that's another topic for another day. Collapsed matter. If that system was going up out of the page at the speed of light, the rotation between these would stop, come to a complete halt. And for all intents and purposes, its processes are standing still. Beyond the speed of light, the magnetic forces overwhelm all the other forces, and this system collapses. Its inertia will go to infinity or to a singularity. I'm not sure that it actually goes to zero. I believe that there's something that's going to keep them at a certain minimum distance apart. Okay, what that is, that's a topic for discussion in ethereal mechanics. And this model of collapsing matter is the basis for the ethereal mechanics black hole model and a material that I dub galaxium. But there's a problem with the V1 models. This process dilation does not occur uniformly in all directions. If this, I showed you the example where it's coming up out of the page. Well, what if it were translating sideways? Well, in that case, it doesn't work. Oh, we can't have models that don't, you know, translate. You know, we don't get the same answer in all directions. And so, by inferring terms needed, and you can go to the paper newmagnetism.pdf to allow process dilation to occur regardless of direction of motion. New magnetism was born, and the three. Version 3 models are shown on the next page, and now we have three spherical models. Let me move it into the sunlight a little bit. And later on I found there's another way to derive new magnetism from F equals Q V cross B by including experiments that are missing. Experiments that are missing, okay, that were well known, that are just not included in, in any of Maxwell's equations or even Q V cross B. Um, and so we were able to, from that, so I've been able to show it two different ways, by inferring the new magnetism model of matter and from taking a different route with classical theory, I was able to get to new magnetism from both directions, get the same answer, and show to you in the secrets of QV cross B, I think that's the paper, that Galilean relativity is baloney. But, uh, well, we'll talk about that later. Lorentz translation is you have to take with a grain of salt. So this is new electromagnetism V. There is a V4 set. It's not a difference to the models. What it is is an improved definition of energy that I use in my graduate thesis. But don't worry, new electromagnetism V5 will be coming out, which will have these in, in a Q-algebra form, which will make them a little more compact. But it won't explain anything more than these do right now. So where are we now? We have electromagnetic definitions of inertia, which we used to call mass, induction, process dilation, collapsed matter, and e equals IC squared. I, we have to get rid of this concept of mass. Mass is a quantity of stuff. Inertia 
and mass used to be the same thing. We have to separate them now. That's in a video on my website called Mass Murder. And so the proper rendition of this is equals IC squared. And um, that is the proper way to explain this. It's energy is equal to inertia times the speed of light squared. So the final two videos, EMF005, we're going to discuss new gravity. We're going to go into length contraction, the initial hints of a medium. We're going to discuss gravity. And we're going to discuss a homework problem from EMF003. And then EMF006 is going to be the final video in this foundation series where we're going to show you the green light logic that gives the green light to go ahead for ethereal mechanics. And it'll be the introduction into a new course uh, in the Distinta University series where we're going to just discuss ethereal mechanics from the beginning without all the other crap in the other videos. Thank you. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. I know a lot of people have been putting questions on my website. Um, I, there's one gentleman that wants to know what books he can read and stuff like that. I don't have an answer for you right now. All I can say is sit tight with the videos. I will cover everything that you need to know in electromagnetic theory sooner or later. Um, if you do want to get started in a book, you can take Engineering Electromagnetic 7th Edition uh, by William Hyatt and everything up to Chapter 7 is still pretty decent. And then Chapter 11 is okay, but uh, Chapter 11 is, 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 is a very small, very, very few engineers use it. Only people that deal with transmission lines do you actually deal with that. Or maybe high-speed circuit boards, they deal with it now. Thank you very much. Take care.